Today we're going to go over the uh, indications, contraindications, and a demonstration for our cane blind insertion the airway device. So before we get started, we'll take a look at all the equipment that we're going to need to complete the procedure. So anytime we're going to do anything with airway management, we want to make sure that we have our, our simple adjuncts, our OPA, oral pharyngeal airway, our NPA, nasal pharyngeal airway. We want to make sure that we have our portable suction device with our Yankauer tip and our French tip suction. Our BVM, we want to make sure that we've got a good mass and that we have our oxygen tubing connected to our, our portable oxygen tank. We want to make sure that we have the correct size King Airway, our stethoscope to confirm placement, our end title capnography uh, to look at waveform, our color metric device. We want to make sure that we have our, our tie and any time that we're using these devices, we want to make sure that we have water-based lubricant to make sure that we have uh, smooth application. So when we start to look at our, our King Airway devices, they come packaged a couple different ways. One way is going to be on one side, we're going to have our device, and on the other side, we're gonna have the a proper syringe to deliver the prescribed volume of air. It's also gonna have a package of the water-based lubricant, and it's gonna come pre-packaged just like this. Another way that it can come packaged is just as the device itself. So you want to make sure that you have your water-based lube and the correct size syringe to deliver the appropriate prescribed volume of air. And in the ones like this, there's a little insert that has the, the instructions. So you always want to make sure that you're, you're familiar with how to use your device. So our King Airway devices come from in sizes zero to five. Zero is going to be for anyone over five kilograms. On the ambulance, we're going to carry sizes three, four, or five for our adult patients. So our King Airway devices are going to be sized based on the patient's height. So our number three tube is going to be for anyone that's between the heights of four feet and five feet. Our size four tube is going to be for anyone between the heights of five feet and six feet. And our five tube is going to be for anyone that's taller than six feet tall. If we take a look at our tube, we can see this blue line is the radiopaque line. So this is so they can confirm placement with an x-ray in the hospital. We start here, this is our distal cuff. When this is inflated, it's inside the esophagus and it's going to prevent gastric distension and help prevent vomit from coming back up into the airway and uh, having the patient aspirate. These here, these openings, this is the fenestrations. So when we ventilate through the tube, this is where the air comes out to ventilate into the conduit and to get to the alveoli for our gas exchange. So our proximal cuff, when this is inflated, this is in the oropharyngeal area. Here we can see that this is, it tells us the type of tube that it is. This is an LTSD. The size is a number four, so again, this is going to be appropriate for our patients between five and six feet tall. It tells us that it's a single use, so all of our airway devices are disposable, we only use them one time. It tells us the appropriate prescribed volume of air to get the correct seal on our cuff. Then we have our, our teeth lines measured out in centimeters. This here is our pilot balloon, so this is where we're going to attach with our lower lock, our syringe to fill our cuffs with air. This port here is going to allow us to insert our OG tube to decompress the stomach and help prevent gastric insufflation. Then we have our universal adapter, our 15, 22 millimeter, which will attach to all of our oxygen devices. So we have two different types of King Airway devices. We have the device that we've just looked at, our LTSD, and then we have our LTD. The difference with this device is that it doesn't have an open lumen. So the distal balloon is going to inflate and sit in the esophagus. It doesn't have an open lumen, so we're not going to be able to pass our OG tube. Our contraindications for our King Airway are going to be, uh, one, we're not going to be able to open up the mouth, so they have trismus, lockjaw. If they have anything that isn't going to allow passive airflow through the device, so if we had any type of foreign body obstruction, um, if we had any type of severe airway edema due to infection, uh, burns, anything that will cause that edema that isn't, that's going to block our airway and not allow passive flow. Um, and our other would be if we have any type of uh, esophagus trauma. So if we have any type of varices, anything like that, we would not want to use this device. 